Thank you, Beth, and thank you, uh, WordCamp, for having me come today to, to talk about uh, kind of a passion of mine, uh, bank robberies. <laughs> um, obviously, it's, uh, it's uh, exciting to be here in Philadelphia with its rich history. Um, and I'm not talking about even what happened in 1776, although that's obviously very important to most of us. Um, actually, 22 years after that, 1798, less than a mile from here at Carpenter's Hall, was the first bank robbery in the United States. So it's very, very exciting to be here and fitting. Um, obviously, bank robberies have kind of become part of American lore. We've all heard of Bonnie and Clyde and John Dillinger and Pretty Boy Floyd and Babyface Nelson, Jesse James, Willie Sutton. We could go on and on. I think what we hear less about is the people that died. In the FBI's Hall of Armor, Honor, excuse me, uh, more than half of those that have fallen in the line of duty have been bank robbery related. So they've died fighting bank robbers. Um, so what does all that have to do with WordPress? Photo blogging. Um, today I want to talk, take you through the last 10 years of, of kind of bank robberies in the United States uh, and kind of what we've done with WordPress uh, on a network of WordPress sites called Bandit Tracker to help fight, uh, fight crimes. So let me take you back 10 years to this start. This was uh, March 2017. Uh, and uh, I got an email from a friend of mine I would helped with a, uh, a family blog. The email said, anyway, I'm writing to see if your buddy, the guy that told me help me with your family site, would be interested in helping with the website for the FBI. <laughs> that was kind of, kind of my response as well. So I did kind of, uh, considering myself a reasonable person, I did what any of you probably would have done. Said, it's the FBI, they have their resources. I ignored it. <laughs> so I, did, I was not a professional developer at that time. In fact, the primary successful website I had up to that point, in my opinion, uh, being a San Antonio Spurs fan and being tired of watching the NBA refs help the Lakers win year after year, I'd started a site, nbarefsucks.com. <laughs> um, so we, we had a lot of fun with that. Um, anyhow, you know, I had just learned about WordPress, but I was excited about the capabilities and, and decided to take on the challenge. My first conversation with the, uh, the FBI, the agent shared me a bank robbery site that Maryland and Washington, D.C. had set up, and he sent me to the site. It was uh, uh, bankbandits.org, and this is what it looked like. And it was Mambo-based, and in 2007, even Mambo was kind of out of date. <laughs> um, and obviously, Mambo would grow up to be Joomla. Um, but I was like, I know we can do better than this with WordPress. And I went and found some photo gallery plugins and uh, actually found a theme. This was the uh, WP Magazine theme, uh, 1.0 Developer Edition, uh, by Michael Pollock at solostream.com. And I just kind of tweaked it to meet the FBI's requirements. And, uh, and we launched it. So really, what I want to do now is just kind of take you through some of the things that we found are important, not just for photo blogs, but really for any website in general. Those things are obviously SEO, analytics, social sharing, quality media, scalability, and innovations. So to start, we'll start where the users start on, on Google with SEO. We kind of had it made, honestly, um, we had links from FBI.gov and from media sites linking to images of, uh, of bank robbery suspects. You typed in bank robbery suspects, we were the number one result. It's pretty easy. You typed in a bank name, we came up. But then something kind of changed. How many of you have had a Google penalty? Anybody? A few of you. <laughs> a few of you, anyhow. Uh, this was actually a little different kind of penalty. I uh, received an email. It says, the suspect called just a moment ago and asked what he can do uh, to remove the active wanted information from him on Bandit Tracker. <laughs> he claims he was arrested, served time for his bank robbery, and then the outstanding wanted notice for him made it difficult for him to find a job. So in researching that, I, I said, okay, let me check this out. Sure enough, I typed the suspect's name in Google, number one search result. And Google was nice enough to share an image of him robbing the bank as well. For <laughs> For, for the uh, prospective employers, obviously, they were excited about that. <laughs> um, so we didn't expect 
that, that people were going to vet their job applicants on Bandit Tracker. That wasn't our mission. It was to identify suspects. Um, and that kind of gets into our, our, our next topic, analytics. How, why are people coming to the website? I love this quote. <laughs> if you torture the data long enough, it will, it will confess. And that's never been more true than on Bandit Tracker. Um, we found some, uh, some really interesting things through our analytics, obviously Google Analytics. Uh, we had visitors from all seven continents, even Antarctica, which is not important at all to bank robberies, but it was kind of cool to know there's internet access in Antarctica. <laughs> so I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, the uh, WordCamp Antarctica. And if I can get a direct flight from San Antonio, I'll speak. <laughs> not likely to happen, but uh, we can try. Uh, but we found some other things, and I don't know if, if you guys have noticed, but if you have the question mark S equals and then a term uh, in a URL on your content, it's a term that's been searched on the website. And people search everything on Bandit. They search location names, they search bank names, they type people's names, a lot of people's names. And uh, early on, I was interested in people doing searches, and really, there were so many names searched, I wanted to see names that were searched multiple times, and I found one said, hey, okay, why did this person search this name? And then when I looked at the user session, he actually typed two other names in his searches. Okay, well, and how did he get there? So we looked at the source, it was Google. Great, we could get a keyword too. So here they typed, keyword Fort Worth Crime Stoppers March 2000. So now we have a place, a location, and names spe tied specifically to that. <clears throat> Excuse me. The location actually of this visitor was Mexico City, Mexico. So here's somebody from more than a thousand miles away in a different country concerned about a specific crime event in Fort Worth in March of 2000. And obviously I forwarded this information to the bank robbery coordinator there who said, that's what we in the FBI like to call a clue. <laughs> um, so this was, again, this was early on. It actually got a little more formalized later and then I started receiving things like this from the FBI a subpoena to testify before grand jury just to have a more official way of supplying this information. They asked for the same things. In this case, they wanted everything related to uh, the reckless robber or reckless bandit, and they wanted to know anything that was searched, the visitor's time and location, all the data that we could provide to them about that. Unfortunately, doing things this way, about the time I received this request, uh, the reckless robber got a little too reckless and was killed in a shootout. <clears throat> um, obviously, we would have preferred him emailing us saying, hey, can you take my wanted active poster off of the, uh, off of the bandit tracker site? Uh, but again, he was a little reckless. Uh, next thing I want to talk about, social sharing. Everything you post on social media impacts your personal brand. How do you want to be known? Early on, again, it's 2007, Twitter had 1,000 users. I think Facebook had 12 million users, so not where it is today. So we started off with RSS feed, feed burner, right? We could get you email updates. Uh, we did add Twitter, Facebook, and other feeds as we moved forward. Um, now something that the FBI does to kind of help brand the suspects and make it easier to share is they come up with uh, nicknames or monikers for any bank robber that's robbed three or more banks. In this case, it was the earlobe bandit. The earlobe bandit, they called him that because he wore the large gauge earrings in his ears when the, he was robbing banks. And he was arrested as a part of social sharing, as you'll see here. It wasn't this bank surveillance picture that led police to 19-year-old Anthony Blue. It was his own mother. It's very difficult for a mother to do what his mother did and actually turn in her own child. But she knows that this was the right thing to do. A family member alerted Blue's mom that he was on the website BanditTracker.com. After seeing these pictures of the earlobe bandit, that's when she decided to call the FBI. We did talk to Anthony's mom who lives here in Garland and she didn't want to be on camera. But she did say that she does not regret her decision because it came down to doing what was right or wrong. But this is something she will live with for the rest of her life. He is not at all upset with his mother 
for doing this. He applauds what she did. He knows that she did the right thing, and he stands by his mother 100% for her decision. Lou pled guilty Tuesday morning for robbing three banks in Garland, Rockwall, and Quinlan last June and July, stealing nearly $9,000. From the start, Anthony's really remorseful about what he did. Even the notes that he gave the tellers all said, I'm so sorry that I'm doing this. Blue's lawyer says he turned to crime to pay off his debts. Tammy Mutasa, NBC. Th thanks, Mom. <laughs> um, actually, I was, I was watching this with my kids this week, and my daughter said it was probably his sister, because that's a sister's job to turn in their brothers. It's like, hey, Mom, did you see what Anthony did? Anyway. Um, so, as you can see, we, we had images of Anthony. You, can, you can't really tell that he has the gauge earrings in most of the images. Um, and that's kind of leads into what we want to talk about next, and that's getting quality media on a site. Quality is never an accident. It's always the result of high intention, sincere effort, intelligent direction, and skillful execution. It represents the wise choice of many alternatives. Unfortunately, we didn't have a lot of alternatives. Uh, we didn't want other um, victims to be in images. We didn't want tellers. We didn't want customers of the bank to be in images. And we were trying to find good images, obviously. Um, on Bandit Tracker, for photo blogs, we had the worst images ever. As you can see from the images here, first image, we have a kind of a grainy magnetic tape that's been recorded over probably dozens of times. We had a, a, you know, artist sketches. In fact, they called me from this bank and they said, yeah, we want to add this suspect to, to Bandit Tracker, but the uh, cameras at the bank were out. I'm like, oh, thanks, thanks for calling. <laughs> How can I help you? Um, and then, obviously, this last one was a digitized, zoomed-in version as well. Now, these suspects here, or this suspect, this was the ZZ Top Bandit. And this was his second career in bank robbery. That He went from 2003 to 2013, uh, robbed million, you know, dozens of banks, millions of dollars. It's his second career in bank robbery. He was arrested, actually, and served time in 1986 for bank robberies as well. But I'll get more into how he was arrested a little bit later. Um, this to me was probably one of the most embarrassing situations I've ever been in. I was actually at a conference like this and, and uh, pointed out as kind of the creator of the Bandit Tracker sites. And then uh, the FBI agent went on to talk about this sit rep or informational situation report uh, from the FBI. And what it said was, recent intelligence derived from admitted bank robber revealed that he targeted banks in New Jersey based on information contained from the Bandit Tracker Northeast website. The website posts information about uh, bank robberies in New York and New Jersey to include details, suspect, bank name, method of operation. The bank robber admitted that he used the information contained on the site to research banks that had been previously robbed. He also viewed the surveillance photos uh, posted on the website. So obviously he went to the website, the suspect's not captured, it's a bad image, that's the bank I want to go rob. <laughs> he was ultimately caught, but I was in my seat sinking down <laughs> during the conference, like, don't look at me. <laughs> Um, I didn't, my intention was not to be an accomplice. Um, uh, there was another similar suspect that I'd heard did similar things. Uh, in fact, this suspect actually would plant weapons and things in two years in advance of his crime and go back and, and execute. And as you can see, it's actually a pretty good image. This is, we wish all banks had <laughs> these cameras. Um, but he's wearing the dust mask, he's wearing the protective gla goggles, and he's wearing the construction helmet. And what you can't tell, this is actually Azul, Texas here. Uh, the hair coming out of the construction helmet, that is not his hair. That is the hair of a woman that he raped and murdered and taped her hair on the inside of his helmet. So this suspect actually came to be known as Israel Keys, arsonist, burglar, uh, serial killer, who fancied himself a bank robber. Um, so this photo blogging is kind of serious but stuff at times. Um, Obviously, he actually uh, committed suicide in jail uh, a few months after he was arrested. Actually, and he was arrested in Texas for a murder of, uh, of a young lady in Alaska. But 11, at least 11 people we know of that he killed, some of which aren't identified, but he only considered Americans people, so we think there's other <laughs> victims in Mexico and or Canada that we'll never know about. So let's talk about uh, scalability. Any idiot, idiot can put up a website, and I'm kind of proof of that. <laughs> um, we had, uh, we, we had a, a few 
successful launches in a number of regions after the first Texas bank robbery site we set up. And uh, I thought we were doing good. We were cashing everything right, all was well, and then this happened. These are the pictures the FBI wants you to see. Faces of the people responsible for some of the 88 bank robberies in the Chicago area so far this year. Today, the Bureau launches a new website, BanditTrackerChicago.com, to get these security camera pictures in front of the public as soon as possible. The faster we can put these photographs on the internet or out into the public sphere, the more people we have looking for these bank robbers, the better chance we have of solving these crimes, and the better chance we get uh, dangerous people off the street. While the FBI isn't seeing an increase in bank robberies, it is seeing more and more of the violent takeover style of robbery, like the one Tuesday in Calumet City. The expectations are very high as far as what the results are going to be here. It will be almost as if you're adding more officers in regards to uh, bank robberies. And the FBI needs all the help can get. Since 2001, the number of agents assigned to bank robberies is down 40 percent. And the FBI's solutions rate is down, too, from 80 percent in the 1980s to 50 percent now. Bandit Tracker is being run in conjunction with Texas-based security firm Electronic Tracking Systems. For whatever reason, FBI headquarters has not released control of our external website to our office. So by the time we actually try to get something up on our external website, it has to go to FBI headquarters. They have to put it in the right format. They have to place it on the website. And by that time, it's usually too late. This is instantaneous. The Bandit Tracker sites are active in a number of cities, including Little Rock, Arkansas, where they are quickly seeing results. And within two weeks, they had one of this violent group who was committing bank robberies there in custody out of a lead from that website. A record Chicago hopes to beat. At FBI headquarters, Charlie Vaughn, Husky, NBC5 News. So the Chicago FBI announced a big press release in Chicago, and this was 2009. 2009, I don't know if you remember, Blagojevich, Rod Blagojevich was in the news. So the media said, oh, the FBI is doing a press release. They showed up in droves with cameras rolling. They get there, and the FBI says, okay, we've got this new website coming up. The media hit early. I was actually at, at the kids' school picking them up, and I get a call from the host company, and your website is frying our servers. I said, well, let me check the caching real quick, and the caching was set right. And No, you made it worse. We're going to turn the website off. I said, don't turn the website off. The FBI is doing a big press release today. These guys have guns, come on. <laughs> they turn the website off. The next three days I spent either, either on, the, on the phone with the FBI explaining why the website went down or with companies saying, hey, can you handle big bursts of traffic on the website, on a website. Um, the agent that I worked with there, the uh, bank robbery coordinator in Chicago, this was his feedback. The biggest thing we screwed up on was the site wasn't fully ready for the public's reaction once we went live. The site crashed twice. Uh, due to visitors flooding the site, we received phone calls from the local media who were ticked off that they couldn't access the site. That really angered me. Ouch. <laughs> so the, the news media the next day was, traffic shuts down new FBI website. Um, so that's, yeah, not, not where you want to be. I did find a good host. And it's, I know everybody's heard it, and we talk about finding a good host partner. It's critical if you want to prevent things like angering people with guns. <laughs> um, but we did find a good host, and then two years later, this was the result. This is one other reason that FBI officials say bank robberies may be down. A two-year-old website called BanditTrackerChicago.com. It is a group effort by federal and local law enforcement that allows bank robbery information to be seen much faster by the public and allows Internet users to view bank photos, details of holdups, and descriptions of the bandits, along with a map that pinpoints where banks have been held up. Tonight, an FBI spokesman credits tips from the website for the capture of some bank robbers, along with work by the Federal Violent Crimes Task Force. So we helped lower crime. Within two years, the crime, the bank robbery rate in Chicago was lower. The, the, FBI, the bank robbery coordinator there, this was his feedback since then. I live, eat, sleep, bandit tracker. We've had it since May 2009. Love it. It is the hub for bank robbery information of Chicago, in Chicago. So again, make sure that your, your host provider is a partner. Make them love the sites. Don't anger, don't anger the clients. The next thing I wanted to talk about today was innovations. For good ideas and true innovation, you need human interaction, conflict, argument, debate. 
in our case, the, the human interaction was often dangerous. The conflict, obviously, you know, very real <laughs> in uh, bank robberies. But I've got actually a special agent in charge, Casey, talking about one case we had in Dallas that led to a lot of innovations. When I talked to Mr. Casey in preparation for this interview, he said, you know, people don't, a lot of people don't understand. They think of the FBI as investigating corruption and things like that. But in the Scarecrow Bandit case, you said, I actually feel like we helped save a lot of lives. Tell me about that. Oh, absolutely. I'm convinced that uh, w whether it was the life of a responding police officer, one of these bank robberies, or a citizen or bank employee or an FBI agent conducting the investigation, uh, this was really uh, a life and death situation. They had robbed 21 banks across the Metroplex. They were what we call takeover bank robbers. They go into the bank. Uh, and they, they take the place over uh, with weapons, uh, get behind counters often, get in the vault often. So very, very dangerous crew. We, we saw a pattern of the use of long weapons. We suspected they were wearing, wearing bulletproof vests, uh, which turned out to be true. Um, signaling, lookouts, uh, uh, switch cars, uh, the whole deal. So the, the Scarecrow Bandits in North Texas, were, they robbed over 20 banks, very dangerous crew. As Special Agent in Charge Casey said, they were wearing bulletproof vests, uh, had very weaponized, very dangerous, violent group. Everyone involved knew people were going to die when these guys finally got caught. Um, actually, through their investigation, they found out that they actually left all of their weapons and bulletproof vests in the trunk of the car until they got to the bank, which actually kept people alive at the end. Um, but for my part, it's like, what can I do to help capture these, these Scarecrow Bandits. What can I do on the website? So I kind of made an enhanced page. It was just Scarecrow Bandits, and we put a gallery. Actually, this was at a press conference where they'd blown up a full-size page of the, uh, of the website that uh, Zach Casey is walking past. But I wanted to do more. I wanted to map all of the bank robbery uh, locations that they had, uh, that they had gotten into. Um, went to the WordPress repository. I didn't really find a plugin that worked for me. So I came up with one and I uh, released it, the Google Maps Geocoder. And for those of y'all that may have used it, I, I apologize. <laughs> um, for the people that are still using it, stop. <laughs> that doesn't work anymore. Um, the feedback from the FBI at that time was, was great. You know, great job with the Scarecrow Bandit page. Some of the best info on the Scarecrows is coming from people viewing the site. Amazing how a crackhead can get on the internet, but $90,000 reward is very motivating. <laughs> yes, yes, it is. Um, and at the same time, I was making these changes. The FBI was, was doing some innovations of their own. Deal. So we were, uh, we were very concerned about that. And uh, as a matter of fact, when we developed them as suspects toward the end, I thought the situation was so dangerous that uh, I asked the director of the FBI for authorization from the attorney general, which was granted to uh, wiretap a cellular telephone that we thought was being used by one of the suspects without going to a judge, known as an emergency wiretap mm -hmm. authorization. Not many of those done. So someone researching this case actually told me this was the first case of the FBI wiretapping a phone without a warrant. And I don't know that that's true. I think this is the first time they publicly admitted to a case um, <laughs> of wiretapping a phone without a warrant. Um, but they, they did, had some other things as well. Uh, FBI's pushing for cell phone tracking. So then the next time you're venting about the NSA, you know, tracking phone calls and things like that on your blog, just remember in, in some obscure way, WordPress has kind of led to uh, vetting that, hey, maybe that's not such a bad idea. Um, so what happened? It works. I mean, Scarecrow Bandit hit with 354 year sentence for holdups. Another Scarecrow Bandit, 29 life sentences. As one article put it, scarecrow bandits could be free by early 24th century after a pills victory. So, um, so they, they are in prison for a long, long time. Um, another thing I, I found in actually getting ready for this presentation, they actually are coming out with the Scarecrow Bandits movie next year, a fictionalized account of, of how these uh, bandits were arrested and some of the cell phone tracking and, and um, tapping came about. So just diving a little bit more into innovation. Innovation really is about the adjacent possible. When something's innovated, what can be innovated as a result of that? Innovation is taking two things that already exist and putting them together in a new way. At my house, 
It was, Daddy, hook up your laptop. We want to watch Netflix. <laughs> okay. Actually, I went to, the, to find an Apple TV. It's like, I, Daddy needs the laptop for work. Um, the Apple TV was sold out, so I came across another device, the Roku. I said, okay, this will work. It's got Netflix, it's got Hulu, the kids will be happy, and I can do my work. Um, but going to their website, registering, I saw the developer section. It said, hey, look, they can stream, you can stream images, and you can stream video to a, to a channel there. And so I set up a suspect TV channel. Like, awesome, this is great. And it was more academic for me. Hey, can I do this? At that time, I had about 5,000 email subscribers to the Bandit Tracker sites. And I uh, said, heck, if half those people ever get Roku and set it up, I'll have 2,000 subscribers to this channel. And then I got my first, my, uh, my first uh, AWS bill afterwards. And I'm like, why is my bill so high? And there's like 66 million images have been streamed from your, from your AWS account. And today we have actually over 35,000 active subscribers to Suspect TV, just watching images of bank robbers streaming by. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, and the FBI has been innovating as well. Uh, the FBI and police have a new tool to help capture bank robbers. Diane Ryan's live in downtown Phoenix to tell us about it. Hi, Diane. Hey, good morning. That's right. We're just a little south of you guys. We're right off uh, 7th Street and Lincoln. And you can see behind me, uh, so. they are unveiling a brand new billboard here. And uh, this is not a billboard that is selling you anything. This is actually a billboard that is going to be showing a gallery of suspects as you drive by. These are pictures of people who may have robbed a bank and they were caught on camera. And now they're going to be on a big screen here as people drive by on 7th Street and uh, Lincoln. And this is called the Bandit Tractor tracker. They're actually hoping that people, when they see some of these pictures, might be able to identify one of these uh, suspects. This is run by the FBI, but to Clear Channel uh, teaming up with uh, law enforcement uh, to make this possible. They have donated these signs. Yeah, so when the FBI call, sends an email and says, hey, can we put your website on a billboard? Yes. Yes, you can. Please. Um, but, but this was a way to expose you know, bank robbers in a big way, literally, right? Get the images on, on digital billboards. Um, a couple of other quick things. I'm running out of time, I know. Um, the Bandit Shield Initiative, uh, Special Agent uh, Dennis May from the Austin FBI office, he actually started this. He was very key in getting the, the Bandit Tracker sites rolled out, but started kind of a best practices for banks and credit unions to follow to, to not get robbed and to help capture bank robbers uh, should they get robbed. Um, fake websites. I told you about the ZZ Top Bandit earlier. He went, he went 10 years, uh, 2003 to, to 2013, before he was caught by a fake, a fake website about a single bank robbery uh, location that he robbed from Shortner State Bank, and they called it the shortnerbankrobbery.com. He went there, they got some information about him and uh, were able to arrest him. And actually, we had talked about this five years earlier, and the FBI headquarters says, no, you can't do that. So the Shortner State Bank people actually Helped, helped with that. Um, they could do it, we couldn't. Um, riot, robbery investigators of Texas, again, uh, Special Agent May, Detective uh, Sean Scott from the Round Rock Police Department, they wanted to build a network of, uh, of uh, detectives from law enforcement, state, federal, uh, local law enforcement, and, uh, and they did that. We actually built a buddy press site on WordPress, again, for uh, the robbery investigators. So when we started all this, uh, 2006, there were 7,000 bank robberies in the United States. Uh, last year, about 4,000. So we've reduced bank robberies in the United States, and at least in part, due to WordPress by over 40%. So thank all of you for your involvement with WordPress. And uh, are there any questions? Thank you, that was an amazing presentation. Um, what, could you back up to the fake websites I didn't catch? Something about an innovation, was it like a way to, were they, was it copying the, the concept? So the, the fake website, um, in 2008 actually, uh, the special agent called me and he said, look, based on the profile of, of this bank robber who's, who was getting his, very, I mean, he was going into banks and clearing out every, he was clearing out the vaults, clearing out all the drawers, getting all the money, and within three minutes he was gone. Um, so in 2008, he's talking to me saying, hey, could we set up a website that, that would attract this guy to read about himself? And, 
said, yeah, we could do that. We'll set up a WordPress site, whatever. We went to headquarters with it, and they, they shut the concept down. Um, Schwertner State Bank um, is a small bank in, in Texas and was, I think they were aggressive, and they were like, what can we do to help? And so they actually set up the website themselves and just monitored the traffic going to the site. And they said, hey, here's this person that keeps coming from Fort Worth. And they ended up uh, finding the, uh, the suspect that way. Hi, uh, really great, uh, very interesting uh, talk, so thank you for that. Uh, my question is going back to the situation that you guys encountered where you had the barrage of traffic coming in and your host shut you down and you had to, to move to something that would scale better. I'm just curious, um, what solution have you guys gone to and have you, what, what are you using now, just out of curiosity? Um, at that time, actually, uh, at the beginning, we went to, um, when we actually did that, we went to, at that time it was MOSO, I believe that was what it was called. It was Rackspace was just kind of coming out with a, a cloud solution at that time that we, that we started using, and, uh, and it, worked, it worked really well for us. I kind of don't want to throw anybody else under the bus, but it was very, very frustrating when they shut the site off. Anybody else? Okay. With the quality of technology being what it is, at the lowest cost it's ever been, why are banks still taking photographs that nobody can understand without anybody else <laughs> Banks don't care about bank properties <laughs> until it happens. Um, they are losing so much money in fraud and, and uh, things of that nature right now that bank robbery is like in the back of their mind, right? They're trying to get in front of the credit card fraud. Um, it's like, oh, you want us to spend more money in this? Um, a lot of the marked bills and things like that, nobody does anymore, right? It's like, why are we going to have this million dollars in marked bills set aside for bank robberies when we can have that in circulation? Um, so I would say for, for the most part, there's an investment there that they have to want to make in they lose so little money, really, on bank robberies compared to, to fraud and other situations. This is nothing to them. Sir? Is this a site that's funded by the government? No. <laughs> it was privately funded. Um, the, the question was if the site was funded by the government. No, the site was not funded by the government. Um, there was, they actually had, for me, for a while, they had I was set up as a confidential human source, which essentially means they can give me money and I take it. Um, but there was, um, there was a, a, a um, sponsors as well for the, for, depending on the region, there was um, corporate sponsors who were covering the cost of having it developed and uh, again, memorandums of understa understanding of how it was gonna be used. But the FBI posted all the suspects. I mean, they'd go in the bank and you would see the suspects on Bandit Tracker before you'd see it in the, the uh, FBI's crime index even. Have you ever had any issues or put, had to put processes in place to make sure that you're publishing accurate data, like not putting somebody else's name or stuff like that? Um, there was a few cases where, where they've made changes, but that's exactly why I let the FBI do all the publishing, I, so I was kind of out of the mix. Um, you'll see on a lot of the images it shows um, copyright of a certain bank or, or whatever because it is from a, a, from a bank robbery, but the FBI gets, you know, obviously rights to use that information. Uh, so, have, there, sorry, have there ever been any efforts like to tamper with the site or sort of hack it or any malicious actors? Um, and like, if so, or how do you protect against that? Um, there really hasn't been, uh, to my surprise, and I'm, honestly, I was kind of always waiting for that to happen. I do nightly backups just in case, but, but really we haven't had any uh, malicious attacks or defacing of the sites ever. Anything else? Okay, thank you. <laughs>